I think today's discussion is important not right now because of the dispensation we we find ourselves in but never has it been more critical for for Africans to talk to each other about Africa or to have a conversation about themselves to each other if a frank and nuanced conversation about the state we find ourselves in and the very causes uh, that that brought us to this point to have a foreign head of state a former head of state tell us that we looked up to south africa but we read about the load shedding and its impact on south africa and the continent leaves us i think comrades at a place where we should find ourselves embarrassed uh, for where we find ourselves in. <clears throat> I want to provide some statistics for you um, before I make my point. Uh, 71 people are killed in South Africa every day. 71 people are killed in this country every day. We are almost at the half mark of, of unemployment and in particular unemployment we are facing drastic numbers in in the line of poverty, unemployment, and inequality, it doesn't seem like we'll be able to solve the the housing challenge. Uh, in Gauteng alone, we are 800,000 houses behind, and that's just for for RTP housing. The jobs we talk about are middle entry jobs. Um, a, lo a large part of our, our jobs that are counted in the number of unemployment is jobs by waiters and um, underskilled workers, entry-level workers or people earning the, the minimum wage. It is therefore time for South Africa to talk to itself, uh, not just to listen to what government and the propaganda of, of what government is saying. But this opens a larger conversation about where Africa is and where we intend to go. So we must admit that nothing is going to work for us without us. But we're going to have to decide if we're going to resolve a lot of the conflict in Africa on how as writers we cover NATO, how we speak about NATO, and why we ask the questions why are they allowed to do what they do? And maybe it's time, I think, colleagues, that we stop this, this kid gloves approach to, to the West because obviously it's a very serious matter when Russia goes to war with its enemy or its neighbor, Ukraine, and all of a sudden the Secretary of State of the US runs to South Africa. So Russia has a war with its neighbor but the Secretary of State runs to South Africa to talk about Russia and Ukraine, something that he ought to think has got nothing to do with us. It doesn't happen in the continent that another country, a foreign country, runs to resolve the conflict between Palestine and Israel. They don't run to resolve the conflict in, in the Western Sahara region and in, and in Morocco. But when it's about NATO, South Africa is expected to take a position because it has infringement on the West. So if the West is really that powerful, we must then consider where else are all their powers aided? Where is Kagame getting all this power? Who's behind him? In Tanzania, when the former president died, suddenly the UK had an interest and was advising government on COVID relief programs they needed to take. And whilst all of us are going to be discussing today we have a problem with guns in Mozambique. The Mozambicans are not funding themselves to have guns. The Mozambicans don't have bread and water. Where do they get the AK-47s? Where do they get the bullets? They don't have water and they don't have a can of beans right now. So who's funding these weapons? So who's funding not just the, the wars, the poverty battles happening in, in Zimbabwe? But who are the beneficiaries to keep Zimbabwe where it is today? 
the beneficiaries, of course, are not in Africa. They are somewhere in the West. They are enjoying what is happening here. They are enjoying the 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 melodramas of Ntlanta Lux, uh, his adventism against a uh, people of his own color. They are enjoying the the battles and the wars that go on here. The the lack of border control, the porous borders that we find. Who's supporting all the guns? Perhaps our answer is with human trafficking rising in Joburg, where are the people trafficked to? Where are they going? Who are the beneficiaries of this thing? When you look at mining in the mining industry and you talk about uh, high economics and the state of which, the state at which we find ourselves, who are the beneficiaries of all this gold that, that's, uh, that's being exploited? all these minerals that are running and maybe the 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 the, the questions dr munia is in the answer and maybe my answer is in the questions the beneficiaries of africa's poverty are the people who benefit from it the same ones who keep se selling us arms the same ones who fund the, the turmoil in the west african region the same ones who bring the guns to, to, to Mali, to Niger, uh, to Benin, and ultimately it is the West. What is that West's interest? It is for an unstable Africa, an unstable continent, which cannot afford bread, because when you can't afford bread, then we keep raising our hands to the West, and they keep supporting. You know, they give you a little bread, and you revolt against your brother. And today I'm hoping for a very liberal and direct conversation about the state we find ourselves in because a lot of Africa's problems are not designed by, by Africans. So we want a capitalist society. Every, our movies are of the West, our music is of the West, our products is of the West, our identity is of the West. We're not going to get Zimbabwe out of trouble until we become realistic about the reason Zimbabwe is in this situation. It is the sanctions imposed by the US, supported by George Biden and his government in order to exploit Zimbabwe and the minerals. And we can write and say all we want about how Zimbabwe is going to go, you know, to be free and how ZANU-PF is going to, to, be, to be liberated and we need a new president. There's no president who's going to come to Zimbabwe that's going to change Zimbabwe unless we talk about the real problem. It is designed in the West. No matter who becomes the president of South Africa, it's not going to, to satisfy our employment issues and our housing issues because our, our constitution is fundamentally flawed, because of our intrinsic connections to the West, because we continue to, to ask for funding from the Bretton Wood institutions, the IMF and the World Bank. They continue to get us into more debt every year to borrow, and they call us friends uh, whilst we are prisoners to them. We're never going to be free. We can't discuss solutions about Mozambique without putting the US and the UK at the heart of the problem. So I think Africa, our solution is in the mechanisms of truth. The truth we are allergic to speaking. Our problem is the, the, the foreign. Our problem is our former handlers and monopoly capitalism. Our problem is the very West that we are afraid to to rock the boat about. So easily we can say, it's the EFF that's the problem. In the 80s it was Azapo that's the problem. In the 90s it was the PAC that's the problem. In the early 2000s it was the DA that's the problem. Right now it's the ANC that's the problem. Uh, when Action SA or whoever takes over, it will be that that is the problem. But we were allergic to identifying the real orchestrator, the real architect of Africa's poverty, the real, Af the real architect of, of Africa's discussion. And it is the boardrooms and designed of the free world.
that being the UK and the US. And I think this conversation opens us to, to discuss all of those. But post that discussion is how we walk from this room, from this cinema, to create a difference in our very audiences, in our very meetings and very communities. Uh, thank you, moderator.